Hello from Sandy Edelson and Buttery Crumbs Fine Desserts. This is my demonstration of how to make our peach meringue tort layers, which are featured in the Bull Sheet, the uh, barbecue newsletter of the Kansas City Barbecue Society. So I wanted to illustrate some of the details in the printed recipe so you could understand what we need to do. What I've done here is I've used a piece of kitchen parchment, which is, ensures that my layers won't stick. And I've traced rect a rectangle from pencil and a ruler so that it forms my outline for piping consistently what will be the layers of the cake. But you don't want the food to come in contact with the pencil marks, so what you do is after you've drawn your pattern here, you turn it over and it's anchored by putting a little cooking spray on the baking sheet. And now you can see your rectangle shape to pipe evenly to bake the layers. So I want you to look here now. I'm about to put the meringue mixture, which was part of the recipe. This is egg whites, sugar, and toasted ground almonds and vanilla and almond flavoring. And I left a little in the bowl just to show you what the mixture should look like and you put this in the pastry bag and that's how we're going to form our layers for this divine cake called the peach meringue tort. So here we go and what I'm using is a number 14 inch pastry bag and I've got a big decorating tip here and it's starting to come out so I'm going to get going here. This is um, a large half inch decorating tip that you could find at any store that sells cake decorating supplies or craft supplies. So what I'm doing is I'm just squeezing out, it doesn't have to be exact, um, as long as you're following the, the dimensions of the outline so you end up with even layers. I'll go back and even this one. And then I'm gonna just fill it in like that and then we'll smooth it out because these are going to bake for an hour and they're going to get very crisp and you want them to be uh, about a uh, about a quarter of an inch thick so for now I'm going to leave that one I'm going to go on to the next one and ultimately when you're making this dessert you will make two trays of these meringue layers so that you have four total sheets to work with. Sheets meaning sheets of pastry, not cookie sheets. So here I go, I'm finishing it up. And again, when you think about what this is, you know, think about making meringue for a lemon meringue pie. It starts out as egg whites and sugar, and then I added the folded toasted nuts, which make it very aromatic, and the flavorings as well. So, I'm now going to smooth it out, and excuse me for a second, I'm going to get what I call a flexible spatula, or cake spatula, and just kind of smooth it out, and smooth it in so that it adheres to this outline that you initially created. And do the same with the other one. And these are going to bake at a pretty low oven temperature, 250 degrees for an hour. But an hour is just a gauge. You'll always want to test them to make sure that when they're done, they will be very, very stiff, crisp. And if you go to gently nudge it, it will start to move. But you can't force it. They are ready when they say so. So sometimes they may take a little longer than an hour. So basically that's the demonstration. We're gonna pop them in the oven now. I'm just gonna make that one a little, move that over so it's even. And we will bake them until they are crisp and done.